Hey, John here from John's Do It Yourself. My wife wanted me to build a nightstand that she had seen on Pinterest, and so I went to look it up. I found instructions with it, and I thought, hey, how hard can it be to follow the instructions? So in this video, we're gonna build a nightstand, but I'm gonna follow the instructions, and you're gonna see it might not be as easy as it seems to be. So, if we get into a bind, yep, we're gonna make this up as we go along. So let's get cutting. I wanted to see if I could get away with making this nightstand totally out of scrap, so I pulled out what I thought I needed. Looking at the instructions, my first cut would be the four legs at 28 inches. I know the instructions say 28, but I want you to cut yours at 26. You will see why later. Next we will look for all the crossbars. The instructions say you will need six crossbars cut at 16 inches and six crossbars cut to 18 inches. Again, I will correct this later, but if you are following along and building this now, just go ahead and cut all 12 crossbars at 15 and a half inches. With any furniture build, you need at a minimum a pocket hole jig. So grab that now. If you don't have one, check the description of this video for a link to the one I am using. So let's add one pocket hole on each end of your crossbars. Make sure both holes are on the same side of each crossbar. Now we are going to attach our legs with our crossbars. Place all pieces on a flat surface and ensure everything is square. Drill in your crossbars to the legs. Before placing your crossbars in position, add a little wood glue to the end of each piece. The gap between the top and the middle crossbar will be five inches. This is correct in the instructions. When looking at my bottom crossbar, you will notice that I am placing it at 3 inches from the bottom. Since you have already cut your legs to 26 inches, place your crossbar 1 inch up from the bottom. You will repeat this for both sides. With your outer frames joined, we can proceed to join the two frames together to create our shape. Take the first three of the remaining six crossbars, they should be 15 and a half inches, and lay them between the frames. If mine look larger than yours, it's because they are. I have not corrected this flaw yet, and mine are still at 18 inches. Lay them out, and lay your two frames on their sides, and join them together in the same fashion with wood glue as you did the first time. Once you're done with one side, simply flip it over and repeat the process. It was at this point that I took a look at where I was in the process and was very unhappy with the results. I thought it was way too big and did not look right at all. So I took it back apart, cut all pieces to 15 and a half, and reduced the legs to 26 inches, giving me only an inch from the ground to the crossbar. Now what's pictured here should look just like yours if you're following along, and more like a nightstand. So let's move on. Since I have already deviated from the instructions, I decided to change things up for the top of the stand. I wanted to give it a little more elegance, so I purchased a 4 foot piece of 1x12 poplar and cut it in half so I would have two pieces to cover the top. The next step is to join the two pieces together. You can whip out your plate joiner and use biscuits, or you can stick to your pocket holes since we already have that tool out. Either will work. I, for demonstrational purposes, will do both. Total overkill, but it's fun and I'm in no hurry. While the top is drying, I begin to work on the support rafters for the shelf. You will need two rafters. Take your measurement and make your cuts, then nail them into place. Yes, I used wood glue here as well. Next, we will start by cutting the bottom of your drawer. Take your width measurement and your depth measurement by measuring the face and the length. Then subtract a quarter of an inch from the face. Take your quarter inch two by two and make your lines. It is important to use a square here to ensure your lines as well as your cuts stay straight. This will allow your shelf to stay square. Slide in your shelf base and make sure you have enough space for it to slide in and out freely. Now you know me and overkill, this extra support piece is totally optional and I only added it because I had an extra piece lying around, so I put it as a center support for the shelf. Let's continue making the drawer. Take a 1x4 and use the base of the drawer to make a mark. We will cut the rear piece first, 
Do this and ensure it is flush with the edges of the base piece when you make your mark. Now cut the two side pieces next. Do not cut a piece for the face yet. When cutting the side pieces, make sure they are tight up against the back piece and that you take them all the way flush with the end of the base bottom. Then make your mark. Use a scrap piece to ensure you are flush. After all three pieces are cut to fit, glue them down and then tack them into position. You should now have a three-sided drawer. Ensure you clean up any glue that has squeezed out while joining them together and then allow it to dry. We can now check our fit and cut the face of the drawer. I recommend measuring your width of the opening and add an inch to that measurement. This will give you a half inch lip around the face of the drawer opening. Yes, the instructions do not say to do it this way, but I am now improvising, i.e. making it up as I go along. And I think that this would be an improvement on the design. After your piece is cut, tack it onto the front of the drawer. Don't forget your wood glue. Here I use a half inch wide cheater stick to ensure I am even all the way around the face. Now take your measurements on the side and fill the gap between your upper and middle crossbars. Cut your half inch plywood to fit. Glue and nail it into place. Now that the glue has dried on the front of your drawer, attach whatever handle you have chosen for your nightstand. Don't screw it completely on tight. Leave it loose so we can easily take it off before we begin to paint. I repeated the process of joining two pieces of poplar together for the bottom shelf. Then I placed the nightstand on top of the shelf and penciled out all of the legs. With a jigsaw, slowly cut out each of your lines. Check your fit and move on. The next thing I did was decide how big I wanted the tabletop to be. With the drawer not being flush with the face, we need to ensure that the tabletop is at a minimum flush with the drawer face. So take a scrap piece of wood and hold it on the front of the drawer while setting the tabletop. Then use the same scrap piece and hold it on the back and make your mark to ensure both sides are exact. Using a tape measure, then you can evenly space the top on the sides. Once you cut your marks, you can place it back on the base to see how everything looks. At this point, we break out the sander. Now I am just going to sand the table top and the bottom shelf since this is supposed to be a farmhouse nightstand. With the top and the bottom sanded, I stain the two pieces. For this project, I used some leftover red mahogany. This stuff looks great on poplar. Then I did a quick coat of polyurethane. I just wanted to protect the top, not try to give it a professional look. And magically, the base got painted. I promise I didn't do it. I could never pull off a paint job that good. Now we are in the home stretch. After everything is dry, we can begin the cross hatches. They need to go on top of the bottom shelf. And I did not want to get paint on them, so this is why I waited. So I will make these, paint them, and then screw them in place. So start by taking a 1x2 and holding it in place. From the inside, make pencil marks for cutting. Do this individually on both sides. With your first cross hatch in place, then you can repeat the process with the second board. Include the marks at the intersection of the first piece and that will give you your two smaller pieces. Mark your pieces before taking them to the workbench. This will ensure you are making your pocket holes on the inside of the cross hatches and out of regular view. With all the pieces cut, we can now join them. With your pocket jig, place pockets on the inside of the smaller pieces. Line them up so you know which ones go inside and face outward. Then you will set those into the larger cross. With each cross complete, we will make pilot holes to make our job of installing them a lot easier. Start by laying the cross flat and drilling into the face. Just break the surface. Once you have, pick up the cross and place it on its feet. Then drill the rest of the way through, going all the way through the bottom of the feet. Now that you have a pilot hole, 
take a larger bit and make a countersink hole. This will allow your screw head to be hidden on the inside. You can use a hand drill, but if you have a drill press, set the table at an angle and make your countersink holes. For the tops of the cross, since they will be on the underside of the table and not visible, you can just drill holes right through the feet, but you should still include countersink holes for them. The last step before we drill in our cross hatches is to attach the tabletop. I just applied glue and then held it in place tight with some clamps until it dried. You can place two or three pocket holes to hold it in place, but I didn't think it was necessary. After my cross hatches were painted and dried, I screwed them in place. From start to finish, this project took about an hour and a half. It's a cute nightstand worthy of anyone's room. Just keep in mind, when you're using Pinterest instructions, be flexible. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.